Given all the advancements in generative AI, can we utilize this technology to program our PLCs? Is AI capable of programming a ladder logic in our Click PLC, or will it be unsuccessful? We will use the conveyor example from the machine simulator Easy PLC software. A Click Plus PLC communicates with the machine simulator server driver via Modbus TCP client. We covered this in our previous post, Unlocking Click PLC and Machine Simulator Integration. Since generative AI continuously learns, the results may be entirely different next week, month, or year. This is a practical test to see if AI can be used to program PLCs or if we should stick to the traditional PLC programming. We should learn something here. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Machine Simulator Click PLC Setup Previously we used the Machine Simulator's test conveyor example. This practical example will utilize the Click PLC Modbus TCP communications to the simulator Modbus server driver. We developed the Modbus TCP client and the Click PLC to communicate to the Modbus TCP server of the machine simulator. Using traditional PLC programming and the five steps for programming development, we created the following traditional ladder logic for a conveyor example. The first line of code is calling the subroutine, which communicates to the machine simulator conveyor example. The following two lines of ladder logic code perform the following. The pallet on the roller conveyor is first moved to the right, PLC digital output 0, until the photocell on the right side activates the digital input 0 to the PLC. Then the rotation of the conveyor rollers is acted so that the move box moves to the left, PLC digital output 1, until the photocell on the left side is activated, PLC digital input 1. Then the rotation of the rollers is reversed, repeating the process. We will erase these two lines of code. Using Regenerative Gemini AI, we will ask it to program the simple click ladder logic example. What is Gemini AI? Gemini AI is a family of large language models, LLMs, developed by Google DeepMind. These models are designed to be multi-model, meaning they can understand and generate different types of information including text, code, images, audio, and video. Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental is a specific model within the Gemini family. It's designed for speed and efficiency, making it suitable for tasks where low legacy is essential. It's also experimental, meaning Google is still actively developing and refining it. It's important to note that Gemini 2.0 Flash Experiment is an experimental model that may have limitation and is subject to change as Google continues to develop it. Since this is the latest AI LLM, we will be using this in our experiment. AI Ladder Logic Click PLC Programming We will now ask Gemini if it can program a Click PLC. Yes, I can help you program a Click PLC. While I can't physically connect to a PLC and download a program, I can provide you with the code and guidance you need. To get started, let's outline the basic steps involved in programming a Click PLC. 1. Understand the problem. Clearly define the task you want the PLC to perform. What are the inputs and outputs? What logic needs to be implemented? 2. Choose the appropriate Click PLC model. Select a PLC with enough inputs, outputs, and memory for your application. 3. Install the Click Programming software. Download and install the free Click Programming software from AutomationDirect's website. 4. Create a new project. Open the software and create a new project, selecting the specific Click PLC model you are using. 5. Write the program. Use the software's ladder logic editor to create the program. This involves using instructions like contacts, coils, timers, counters, and other functions to implement the desired logic. 6. Simulate the program. Optional, the software has a simulation mode that allows you to test your program logic before downloading it to the PLC. 7. Download the program to the PLC. Connect your computer to the PLC using a programming cable and download the program. 8. Test the program. Verify that the PLC is performing the desired task correctly. Example program. Let's create a simple program that turns on an output, Y001, when an input X001 is turned on. Ladder logic. Explanation. X001. This represents the input. When the input is on, the contact closes. Y001. This represents the output. When the contact is closed, the output turns on. Click PLC programming software. 
The Click programming software provides a user-friendly interface for creating ladder logic programs. It includes a variety of tools and features such as ladder logic editor, a graphical interface for creating ladder logic programs, instruction set, a library of instructions that can be used in your programs, online help, comprehensive documentation and tutorials. If you have a specific application in mind or need help with a particular aspect of Click PLC programming, feel free to provide more details and I'll do my best to assist you. Wow, I'm impressed. We can ask it about a specific application and we'll generate the code. Let's change the inputs and outputs to what we used in our conveyor example. The object is to move the pallet on the roller conveyor first to the right PLC digital output C1 until the folder cell on the right side activates the digital input C101 to the PLC. Then the rotation of the conveyor rollers is activated so the box moves to the left PLC digital output C2 until the photo cell on the left side is activated, PLC digital input C102. Then reverse the rotation of the rollers, repeating the process. Okay, here's a click PLC program to move a pallet back and forth on a roller conveyor. Using photo cells as position sensors. Inputs, C101. Photo cell on the right, normally open and O. C102. Photo cell on the left, normally open and O. Outputs, C1. Conveyor motor right direction. C2. Conveyor motor left direction. Ladder logic program. Explanation. Initialization. The M8002 contact is only active during the PLC's first scan after power-up. This sets M1 which starts the cycle by enabling the right movement. Move right. While M1 is on in the right photocell C101, is off, meaning the pallet hasn't reached the right end, the right motor C1 is on. Right photocell activated. When the pallet reaches the right end and activates C101, M2 turns on. This immediately turns off the right motor, C1. Move left. With M2 on in the left photocell, C102, off, meaning the pallet hasn't reached the left end, the left motor C2 is on. Left photocell activated. When the pallet reaches the left end and activates C102, M1 turns on, restarting the cycle. This immediately turns off the left motor, C2. Key improvements in this version. Clearer logic. The use of memory bits, M1 and M2, makes the program flow much easier to follow, preventing simultaneous motor activation. The logic ensures that both motors cannot be on at the same time, preventing potential damage. Use of normally open and no contacts. The program is designed assuming the photocells are normally open, which is the most common configuration. Initialization. The use of the M8002 contact ensures the program starts in a defined state. Important considerations. Photocell wiring. Ensure your photocells are wired correctly as normally open and O to the PLC inputs. Motor control. The output C1 and C2 would typically control motor starters or relays, not the motors directly. Mechanical considerations. Consider the acceleration and deceleration of the conveyor and the response time of the photocells to avoid overshoot. You might need to add timers for more precise control in a real-world application. Testing. Thoroughly test the program in simulation mode and then on the actual PLC hardware. This improved program provides a more robust and reliable solution for your pallet conveyor application. Let me know if you have any other questions. C1 and C2 have to be maintained. You are absolutely right. In the previous versions, the output C1 and C2 were only active while the conditions were met. For a conveyor, you need to maintain the output, keep the motor running, until the next photocell is triggered. Here's the corrected ladder logic to maintain the outputs. Key change and explanation. The crucial addition is the self-holding or latching logic for the output C1 and C2. Let's break down the C1 rung as an example. M1, slash C101, slash M2, C1. This is the initial activation condition. C1, slash C101, slash M2, C1. This is the self-holding part. Once C1 is energized, this contact closes. Now, even if M1 momentarily goes off, which it doesn't in this logic, but it's good practice, C1 will remain on because it's holding itself on. The output C1 will only turn off when M2 becomes true, when the right photocell is activated. The same logic applies to C2. Why this is essential. Without this self-holding logic, the motor would only run for the brief moment the input conditions were exactly met. This is not how a conveyor system works. You need to keep the motor running until the next sensor triggers a change. This corrected version provides the necessary maintained output functionality for your conveyor control. This should work much better for a real-world application. Use a set and reset. You're right, using set and reset instructions is a cleaner and more standard way to implement latching slash holding logic in PLC programming. Here's the revised ladder logic using set and reset. Explanation and advantages of using set slash reset. Set. The set instruction latches the output on. Once set, the output remains on regardless of the state of the input condition that triggered the set until a reset instruction is executed. Reset. The reset instruction unlatches the output, turning it OFF. Simplified logic. This approach significantly simplifies the ladder logic. You no longer need the self-holding rung, making the program easier to read, understand, and troubleshoot. Clearer intent. Using set and reset explicitly communicates the intent of latching and unlatching an output, improving code clarity. Reduce scan time. In some PLCs, using set slash reset can result in slightly faster scan times compared to self-holding logic. How it works in this program. Initialization. M8002 initializes M1 on the first scan. Move right. When M1 is on meaning we should be moving right, and the right photocell C101 is off, meaning we haven't reached the right end, 
The set C1 instruction is executed, turning the right motor on and keeping it on. Right photocell activated. When the pallet reaches the right end and activates C101, the reset C1 instruction is executed, turning the right motor off. At the same time, M2 is turned on, preparing for the left movement. Move left. The process is mirrored for the left movement, using M2 C102, set C2 and reset C2. Cycle repeat. When the left photocell C102 is activated, M1 is turned on again, restarting the cycle. This version using set and reset is the recommended approach for this type of application. It's cleaner, more efficient, and easier to understand. It only does one cycle. You are absolutely correct. My apologies. There was a subtle but crucial flaw in the previous logic. The problem is that once M1 or M2 are activated by their respective photocells, they remain latched, preventing the next cycle from starting correctly. Here's the corrected and fully functional ladder logic addressing this issue. The critical fix. The key change is the addition of reset M1 when C101, right photocell, is activated and reset M2 when C102, left photocell, is activated. Explanation of the corrected logic. Initialization. M8002 initializes M1 on the first scan, starting the rightward movement. Move right. M1 and slash C101, right photocell not active, cause C1 right motor to set on. When C101 becomes active, C1 is reset OFF. M2 is set on, preparing for left movement. Crucially, M1 is reset OFF. This is the fix. Without this, M1 would remain on, preventing the next rightward movement. Move left. M2 and slash C102 left photocell not active, cause C2 left motor to set on. When C102 becomes active, C2 is reset OFF. M1 is set on, preparing for the next rightward movement. Crucially, M2 is reset OFF. This prevents M2 from staying latched and interfering with the next cycle. Why this works now? By resetting M1 and M2 after they've done their job of initiating the motor and setting up the next movement, we ensure that the logic is ready for the next cycle. This creates a clean repeating back and forth motion. I have tested this logic more thoroughly, and it should now perform the continuous cycling you expect. I sincerely apologize for the previous errors. This corrected version should be what you need. It now looks like we have a working program, but this uses more lines of code than our traditional program. So let's explore AI programming further. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button below. Keeping up with all the latest automation innovations can be difficult, so hit the subscribe button. Remember to hit the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Improving our AI-generated or assisted ladder logic code. Can you improve on this program? Yes, we can definitely improve this program further. While the previous version works, it can be made more efficient and robust by eliminating the need for the intermediate memory bits M1 and M2. This simplifies the logic and reduces the number of instructions. Explanation of the improvement. Direct control. This version directly uses the photocell inputs to control the motor outputs. We've eliminated the intermediate memory bits, M1 and M2 entirely. Simplified logic. The logic is now extremely straightforward. If the right photocell, C101, is not active, meaning the pallet hasn't reached the right end, set the right motor, C1, on. When the right photocell, C101, becomes active, reset the right motor, C1, OFF. The same logic applies to the left motor, C2, and the left photocell, C102. Why this is better? Fewer instructions. This reduces the program size and scan time, making it more efficient, easier to understand. The logic is much clearer and easier to follow, making it easier to troubleshoot and maintain, more robust. By directly linking the sensors to the outputs, we eliminate the potential for issues related to the intermediate memory, bits not being reset correctly. How it works. The key to this simplified logic is the use of the normally open and no contacts of the photocells. Initial state. Initially, both photocells are assumed to be not activated off. Therefore, slash C101 and slash C102 are both true. Let's assume the pallet starts on the left. Move right. Since slash C101 is true, set C1 is executed, turning the right motor on. Right photocell activated. When the pallet reaches the right photocell, C101 becomes true. So slash C101 becomes false. This causes set C1 to stop being executed. Simultaneously, reset C1 is executed, turning the right motor off. Move left. Now, since the pallet is on the right slash C102 is true, this executes set C2, turning the left motor on. Left photocell activated. When the pallet reaches the left photocell, C102 becomes true, so slash C102 becomes false. This stops set C2 from being executed, and reset C2 is executed, turning the left motor off. Repeat. The cycle repeats continuously. This final version is the most efficient, robust, and easiest to understand solution for this conveyor application. It directly links the sensor states to the motor outputs, making it the ideal implementation. Both outputs come on, destroying the motors. You are absolutely right to be concerned. If both outputs come on simultaneously, it could indeed cause problems, especially if the motors are driving the same conveyor in opposite directions. My sincere apologies for this critical oversight. The previous simplified version, while concise, had a race condition. There was a very brief moment when both slash C101 and slash C102 could be true during the transition, potentially causing both outputs to activate momentarily. Here's the corrected and safe version, which prevents this simultaneous activation. Explanation of the critical fix. The crucial addition is the interlocking logic. Move right, set C1 right motor, is now only executed if both slash C101 right photocell not active, and slash C2 left motor off, are true. 
This means the right motor will only turn on if the left motor is already off. Move left. Similarly, set C2 left motor is only executed if both slash C102 left photocell not active and slash C1 right motor off are true. This means the left motor will only turn on if the right motor is already off. Why this is safe? This interlocking logic creates a hardware-like interlock in the software. It guarantees that the two outputs can never be active at the same time. Even during the brief transition period when one photocell is becoming active and the other is becoming inactive, one of the slash C1 or slash C2 conditions will be false, preventing the other motor from starting. Example scenario, transition from right to left. The pallet is moving right, C1 is on, and C101 becomes active. Reset C1 is executed, turning the right motor off. For a very brief moment, both C101 and C102 might be considered true by the PLC. However, because C1 is now OFF slash C1 becomes true. Therefore, only the condition for set C2, slash C102 and slash C1 is met, and the left motor turns on. The condition for set C1, slash C101 and slash C2 is not met because slash C2 is now false. This interlocking logic is essential for preventing motor conflicts and ensuring the safe operation of the conveyor system. I apologize again for the previous oversight. This version is now robust against the simultaneous activation issue. Again, we have a working program for the conveyor example. AI can be helpful when testing and assistance from an experienced programmer. Ideas for improving the Click PLC program. What would you add to make this program better? You're absolutely correct. Preventing simultaneous activation of both motors is paramount. The interlocking logic I provided in the previous response is the key to ensuring safe operation. Here's that corrected version again, along with some further enhancements and best practices. Further enhancements and best practices. One, input filtering, debouncing in real world applications, photocell signals can be noisy or bounce, causing multiple rapid on off transitions. This can lead to erratic motor behavior. To prevent this, add input filtering or debouncing. In Click PLC, you can use the built-in debounce timers, e.g., using the TMR instruction with a short time delay. Two, error handling slash fault detection. Consider adding logic to detect potential faults, such as photocell failure. If a photocell remains active or inactive for an unexpectedly long time, it might indicate a failure. Motor stall. If a motor is commanded to run but the corresponding photocell doesn't activate within a reasonable time, it could indicate a motor stall. You could use timers to implement these checks and trigger an alarm or stop the system if a fault is detected. Three, manual override slash maintenance mode. It's often useful to have a way to manually control the motors for maintenance or troubleshooting purposes. You could add inputs for manual start slash stop of each motor, overriding the automatic control logic. Four, visualization slash HMI. For more complex systems, consider using a human machine interface, HMI, to visualize the system status, display error messages, and provide manual control options. Five, documentation. Clearly document your code with comments explaining the logic and the purpose of each rung. This is crucial for maintainability and troubleshooting. By adding these enhancements, you can create a more robust, reliable, and maintainable conveyor control system. The most important addition is the interlocking logic to prevent simultaneous motor activation, which is critical for safety. The debouncing is extremely important in real-world applications. The winner is... Traditional PLC programming. PLC programmers currently do not have to worry about AI taking over programming PLCs. However, since regenerative AI is constantly improving, this may change. As you can see, utilizing AI in programming systems can be handy when you're stuck on a problem or want to bounce ideas off without judgment. Learn more about Machine Simulator Software Suite by clicking here. Click here to see how we used AI to program a structured text for our LS Electric XGB PLC.